That's not why I came to be you know, you know, fucking backwards. Oh, shit. I hate to break it to you. You decide you gotta get me. Now, why were you so on me? Go, you called me a mark earlier, right? Yeah. So I'm a super, in a good way. I'm a super fan. Yeah. I'm a fan of a lot of things. And uh, early on, when I was probably, I think Scream came out when I was 13. Yeah. And I was a huge fan of Scream. I think yeah. I wrote a book about it in school. We had like a school project. Mm-hmm. I wrote about Scream. I wrote about Wes Craven. I wrote about Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, Friday the 13th. Again, going back to earlier, I love America. Yeah. So I thought American high school kids, they watch horror movies and that's what they did. You thought it was like that and then one, of your, one of your peer group would get brutally stabbed. Not, yeah, yeah, not that part, but I just felt like, you know, that's what you just watch horror movies and- You're a lot, as a lot of people I, who aren't from this country that come here, I always find that they, it's crazy how much people learn about our country through pop culture. Like yeah. McDonald's, is the number one food, they think. Britney Spears, you know, ER. Like, they do consume so much. I know that a lot of people say that. Yeah. So you were consuming pop culture. Consumed by it, and I thought, you know what, I remember your character, Randy, had some great lines from the movie. Spoke to you. Spoke to me, and I thought, this that's gold. And then you had the Jamie Kennedy experiment, which I liked. Spoke to you. And then over here... You had uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. I, I like that. Malibu's. Uh, big, big, you know, and then um, Bowfinger. But that, those are the ones that sp- Scream and, and Malibu's Most Wanted stood out to me. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, you know, if you embrace the characters of B-Rad and Randy, those characters can be gold on Cameo. Yeah. Just given the characters. Just given the characters. Ah, uh, shout, listen to this. And then I'm going to go back to this. Yo, 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 I'm sorry. I got to interrupt myself to talk about myself. You asked for it, so we dropped it. That's right. This is another limited run hoodie. Samson Montague. That's right. If you're a Montague boy, which I am for life, Montague for life, you can get this hoodie right here and wrap it. And yo, summer's coming. And I'm saying, I know some of you guys are getting jacked up, you know, TikToking and stuff. So you can get this nice, beautiful tank top. That's right. A tank top with me on it. That's right. Represent that you're part of the Montague boys. That's here. So just click the link below if you want to get that. And remember, RNJ forever. Side note, Justine, uh, Justine the Machine on Instagram. Very, very, very funny comedian. Okay, she had a birthday yesterday and she got a cameo from Roger Jackson, who is ghost faced. Hello, Roger. And it's might be the best way I've ever seen a cameo. He introduces himself. He goes, hello, Justine. I'm Roger Jackson. Happy birthday. And then he puts the mask up and he does a bunch of stuff, like a two minute message in ghost face. She's, I don't know how old she is. I'm going to say she's 29. She was flipping. She loved it. It's an incredible cameo, dude. So there's your example of do, embracing what people know you from. Yeah, and then it's fun as well. It's fun for you if you embrace it and give the fans what they want because the, the love you get back from them in these, I know it's kind of a bit cheesy saying this, but five-star reviews, Yeah, it is magical. Like, I got to tell you about that. But so wait, so you, you launch it in 2017. Does it take off right away? N- no, no. I have some questions. <laughs> So what happened? It just was so many no's. Where's the launch party at? It was at my house. <laughs> you fucking, I didn't even get that. I wasn't no, there yet. No, Where was it at? By the fucking no, jacuzzi? We, we had, yeah. <laughs> do you know, do you know? Uh, you have a beautiful house in ballet. It was yeah. in my house. But you know, it was this, it was. <laughs> Couldn't have been that bad. No, nah, but it was just so, the, part, the launch party was fun, but there was just so many no's. Oh, it, we live in the land of no. Oh, no, like I, I, I make a point of saying that because I want someone to get inspiration from that. Yeah. Like I couldn't get a job. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people can relate to that. You couldn't get a job. You couldn't make the SC team. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't get hired as a sports agent. No. You couldn't get people on your app. No. I know. You are super resilient. You are a loser. No, you <laughs> or a failure. No, you're, 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 you know, you ever heard the pair, uh, the story three feet from gold? Oh, I know what you're talking about. Basically, the guy who had the gold during the gold rush sold the guy a gold machine because he was finding gold. And then after 110 tries or something, he just said, I can't find the gold anymore, sold it. And then the next 
this guy sold a two found gold in like two tries and he was that close you know it's about not giving up yeah basically not giving up i mean you got to realize i sent out in four years a million messages I, I signed up about 5,000 people. And I might be wrong. It might be a lot higher than that. But I know it's over 5,000. Dude, so hold on. Here's what I want to say. And then we're going all over the place. Here's why I think those no's are valuable. Because there's like 10 or 12 superstars in our business. And I don't know who you were going for. But they will always be the last to jump on. But if you get 100 reality stars, that is golden. Because that's just going to add massive awareness. You know what I mean? And then you get sports stars. And then you get music stars. And then you get cooking stars or whatever. And then you're going to get comedians. And then by getting so many... I don't know if you went for a super, super high echelon in the beginning, but they're always going to say no because they want to protect this thing, this image. And by people that are entrepreneurial who are, I would say, high, lesser, lower on the food chain in Hollywood, you're going to get massive volume on your app, which is beautiful for you. So you will actually become, I have a lot of things to say about it, but you will become bigger than the nose. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's Kim Kardashian is now the second billionaire in her family. Okay. Everyone in Hollywood on the super a list wants that money. And that just shows you the power of yes. The power of celebrity as well. Well, yes. And it's totally changing. So I want to go back to it. So you go in and you're trying to get the nose. And so how did you start getting it involved? How did you start making it work? You had your launch party. Just hustle. That's you just on. hustle. I told you I sent out a million messages. Yeah. I was sending out 200 messages before 8 a.m. every day. Every day. I was never off. Morning, I wouldn't sleep. I'd get messages. I'm on. So I would send out in a day. I've sent out a thousand messages in a day. Yes. Who was your first person that you signed? Well, Cassius Mars. Cassius Mars, after him. Um, I had a few people that I knew say yes, but they didn't really participate until later on. One was uh, Nigel de Jong, mm -hmm. a soccer player, played for uh, Man City, uh, AC Milan. He played at the Galaxy as well, LA Galaxy. Prince, Kevin Prince Boateng, who played for AC Milan. Uh, Maro Atojo, who was like an England rugby player, mm -hmm. star rugby player. But they all were current. Mm -hmm. didn't need the money didn't really care mm -hmm. and you learn for the process you can't you got to find the, the thing that became important was finding willing talent yes that was it yes so then you come down and you dm me dm yeah you you ask your brother to come down and be with me mm -hmm. you said he just said no so then you come down you watch the show it's great three ladies walk out i think i offended two people three people i don't know you know, you had your tremors joke. My tremors joke. <laughs> <laughs> you, love that. you love that. And then I'm leaving and then you're outside waiting for me like a little, uh, like a little, like a little stalker. Nervous. I, nervous as well. Why would you be nervous? And you, what did I tell people when we did our first, first cameo? I hope it's not porn. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I thought you're signing me up for some porn, bro. Uh, I didn't know because I had heard about it. And here's what I think you're, I'm so pissed because I wanted to invest, but you already had your investors. Who were the early investors? Uh, well, we had Cassius Moss invest from the, from the, <sighs> he made out. Uh, Nigel De Jong invested. Uh, we had uh, Lance Thomas for the New York Knicks invest because he went to school with Stephen and they went to Duke together. Friends and family. Friends and family. Yeah. And now, I think when I met you, it had like a $50 million valuation. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And then... It just keeps going up. Well, last week, the Wall Street Journal said you guys were a billion. Yeah. You probably went up since last week. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. I mean... Dude, hold, 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 hold. Take a little. You take a little off for your side project, but you know that's going to grow, dude. I'll be very surprised if you're not worth a $10 billion valuation. Soon. 
Right? Oh, yeah. you said soon. No, I, I agree. And I mean, it's exciting. Don't tell me what you, I don't know what you're allowed to say. So, and, uh, but you're probably either going to look for an exit or it could be its own thing. I don't know. But I know many people that could, would like to gobble you up. I, it's so crazy. These things that come into my office. I saw Twitch in 2012, but I couldn't invest in it because it was already going. But I knew that that was going to go. It was early. And some guys like, this is going to blow up. <laughs> so here's what I love about your your thing dude i mean are you surprised how much it's worth of course of course but you wanted a unicorn do you know what i just wanted to look after my girls you did oh stop stop no stop pulling the heartstrings. no right absolutely no do you know what it is yeah of course everybody has i came here with big dreams yeah i didn't come to america to scratch my butt i came here with big dreams <laughs> i wanted to make something myself i really wanted to to do something special. Yeah. But for years, and this has been like a 20 year process for me. I know you were telling me at lunch that you're like, you had many other failures. What, did you have other startups? No, it wasn't that, it was my running failed. Okay. Football failed, okay. the movie stuff failed. You know, just like, I just felt like I put so much effort. But why are they considered failures when you were doing them and you were achieving them at high levels? What is the success? What's the successful- I didn't reach the potential. So meaning like you didn't get the Olympics. Yeah. You didn't make it to the USC team. Yeah. You didn't play in the NFL. Yeah. You didn't become a top agent. Yeah. It was, you know, the thing is I put a lot of effort. When I mean I work my- No, oh, I know. I, I did that for 20 years. I wouldn't go out to celebrate. I wouldn't go out to parties because I was a loser. I hadn't done anything yet. Mm -hmm. I was very tough on myself. Mm -hmm. Like- I don't even know why I thought that way. Like I, I, I was, I was pretty much miserable because every day wake up, try and be great. Wake up, try and be great. It's just not a healthy, it's really isn't healthy. So to finally with cameo to see that reward for that effort, uh, it in a way is refreshing. Finally, in a way, oh, it's more than in a yeah, way, a, a wrong words. It's insanely but, amazing. It, it, but the thing is, the nice part about it, all of this, those scars, whatever you want to call them, the, the failures, the learned lesson, whatever you want to call it, it humbles you. See, I don't think you failed at all. I think you were just, that was your, your, your path that you're working on, you're walking on.